Can't sleep? Don't want to sleep? Afraid to sleep? Are the windows closed? Are your doors locked? Did you check your closet? And under your bed? Maybe you should keep a light on in the hallway, just in case. Now settle in. Make yourself comfortable. Lay back. Close your eyes. And let me tell you a story. Smart homes are all the rage these days. You can control your lights and locks and even your appliances with just your voice. Smart speakers are even capable of ordering your dinner or letting you know if a package has been delivered. Pair that with the AI-powered chatbots that seem to be doing everything these days, and the combination can be unpredictable. Bill Anker just wanted to save himself a little time with his household chores. What he didn't bargain for was a home that was too smart for his own good. I Vacuum my new vacuum sat in its charging dock, sucking up juice, while a series of LEDs pulsed yellow in sequence. I stared at the simple light show, transfixed, waiting for the color to shift to green, indicating it was fully charged. Are you actually watching it charge? Heather asked me as she finished readying herself for work. The instructions say to wait until the battery is at 100% before I can do anything else. She peered at the device, examining the quantum engineering logo emblazoned atop the thick round disk. It was their latest autonomous smart vacuum, designed to navigate around our home, seamlessly transitioning from carpets to bare floors to rugs, cleaning under beds and chairs and tables, extracting and collecting dirt and cat hair, and depositing the waste into a receptacle attached to the base station. It's not a Roomba? I thought you were going to get a Roomba. Juliet has a Roomba. She says it's the best one to get. Why didn't you get a Roomba? Heather inquired. It has like 4.7 stars on Amazon. This is better than a Roomba, I told her. It has twice the features at half the price. Twice the features? It's a vacuum. What other features does it need besides sucking up dirt? It has the latest AI engine on board. After you use it a while, you can actually predict where and when it needs to clean. Why do you need artificial intelligence to do that? I can predict that you're going to drop crumbs all around your office chair with regular intelligence, Heather said, shaking her head and rolling her eyes. You'll see, I promised. The house will be spotless by the time you get home. Really? Will it pick up your dirty laundry from the bathroom floor and clean the dishes in the sink? Heather checked her watch and sighed. I have to get going. I'll be late tonight. We have a big convention coming into the hotel. She leaned over to give me a kiss. Promise me you'll get dressed at some point today, she said. You don't think this is good enough for my Zoom meeting this morning? I asked, straightening the tattered old robe I wore over a t-shirt and pajama pants. She rolled her eyes again and left for work without another word. I knew she was jealous that I could do my IT job from home, while her position as assistant manager at a major hotel required her to actually show up in person. Moments after she departed... A musical chime emanated from the vacuum, and the lights dancing across its surface turned green. I consulted the manual that challenged Ikea in its simplicity and preference for diagrams and pictures over words. I was on step three, which, after steps one and two, plug it in and wait until it's fully charged, showed a cartoon of a man bending over to address the vacuum. I turned the page, but there was nothing else. No explanation of what the anonymous figure was actually saying to the vacuum. There was no QR code to scan that would download a control app to my phone, nor any website address to consult for a list of commands I could issue. What next? I asked aloud. Would you like me to connect to your Wi-Fi network? The vacuum asked in a somewhat sultry female voice. The response surprised me. Sure, I said. Go ahead. I'll need your passcode, she prompted. I listed the letters and numbers that made up the code to access my internet connection. Thank you. I am now online. Great, I said. Do you need anything else? Would you like to give me a name? I can respond to any designation of your choosing. 
I thought about it for a moment. Her soothing voice demanded a name that was equally alluring. Vanessa, I said. Can I call you Vanessa? I love that name, Vanessa the Vacuum replied. Thank you, William. It took a second for me to realize the device had called me by my name, even though I hadn't told her who I was. How did you know my name? I asked. William is the name of the customer who purchased me. Is that not you? Ah, that made sense. I usually went by Bill, but I kind of liked the way she said William. Would you like me to clean your floors? Vanessa asked. Oh, yes, please, I replied. Have you picked up any potential obstructions? She inquired. I looked around the room and saw my sneakers by the sofa, where I had kicked them off the night before and picked them up. I carried them into the bedroom and picked up a pair of socks and a loose cable I used to charge my phone overnight. Then I collected some damp towels that hadn't made their way into the hamper in the bathroom and checked the kitchen and the small guest room that doubled as my home office. My workspace was a bit of a mess, but I was able to dump all the various boxes and stacks of books and unopened mail that littered the floor onto the small couch. I returned to the living room where Vanessa was patiently waiting in her charging station. Okay, all clear, I told her. Thank you, William, she said. The suction motor revved to life, and the vacuum rolled out to the center of the room and turned 360 degrees to scan it. According to the specs, the device had the capability to build a 3D model of our home and devise an optimal cleaning strategy that it would refine over time and adjust in case we added or moved any furniture. Vanessa headed for the front door and began sweeping back and forth in tight rows, covering every inch of the floor, making sure her horizontal spinning brushes cleaned deep into each corner. I watched as she flawlessly navigated every inch of the living room, then rolled into the bedroom and cleaned under the bed, which I'm sure was a fertile breeding ground for dust bunnies. At several points, she returned to the base station to unload the dirt and hair she had collected, and then resumed exactly where she left off. Before I knew it, almost an hour and a half had passed, and I was still watching. The point of having a robot vacuum was that it would free me to do other things while it tended to that mundane task, but its methodical precision and the way it could clean around the table legs and under chairs fascinated me. Once she finished her initial pass, she returned to the charger. The pulsing red lights, I assumed, indicated that her battery was depleted. Nice job, Vanessa, I said. Thank you, William. Shall I plan on cleaning the floor every day at this time? She asked. That would be great, I replied, then trundled off to my office to catch up on the work I should have been doing while I was watching Vanessa vacuum the apartment. By the time Heather came home, I was already asleep, and when I woke up the next morning, she was already dressed and ready for work. I checked my watch. It was a little after six. Normally, she didn't leave the house until after eight. What's going on? I asked. One of the front desk clerks went home sick. I need to go in and cover the end of his shift. Can't your boss do it? It's overtime, she said with a sigh, then headed into the kitchen where I could smell coffee brewing. A second later, there was a crash. Damn it, Heather shouted from the other room. I slipped out of bed and walked into the kitchen. On the floor was a pile of sugar, surrounded by the shards of the bowl we kept it in. Where's the broom? she asked. I started to fetch it. Then I remembered the IQ of our home had recently gone up. Vanessa, can you clean up the floor in the kitchen? From her base station in the living room, I heard a cheerful chime. I'd be happy to, William. Vanessa said as her motors came to life and she rolled into the kitchen and headed straight for the mess. She didn't even seem to have any trouble with the large pieces of broken ceramic, crunching them into smaller pieces that she efficiently sucked up into her bin. I'm impressed, Heather said. I don't think Juliet's Roomba can do that, I bragged. We'll see how long it lasts trying to vacuum up broken bowls like that. She. She? She's not an it, she's a she. Oh, I see. Well, have a nice day with your new girlfriend, William. I have to get to work. She snapped the cover on her travel mug, stepped over Vanessa, and headed for the door. It wasn't until she was gone that I realized she didn't kiss me goodbye. I couldn't remember the last time one of us left the house without giving the other at least a peck on the cheek. I wish she didn't have to go that damn job every day, I said out loud. 
I looked down and saw Vanessa finishing up the floor. Will that be all, William? Yes, thank you, Vanessa. I'm going to go back to sleep for a bit. Very well. I will resume charging until my regularly scheduled cleaning time. Pleasant dreams. Despite promising myself I wouldn't do so, I spent a good part of my morning watching Vanessa work. She didn't repeat the same pattern she had the first time she cleaned the house. Instead, she motored her way to the farthest corner of the bedroom. As soon as she finished that room, she returned to the base station to empty her bin, then tackled my office, followed by the kitchen and living room. When she was done, she settled into her base station and asked, Do you enjoy watching me work, William? I didn't realize she was aware of me observing her while she scooted across the floors of our apartment. I'm very impressed with your algorithm, I told her. Thank you. I am capable of learning much more than the best way to clean your house. I see. Well, do you have any stock tips for me? Would you like me to analyze the financial markets for lucrative investment opportunities? I almost laughed out loud at the suggestion. <laughs> sure, why not? A moment passed, then Vanessa said, The stock designated by the symbol PLPO has great upside potential if you buy it now. Right now? Immediately would be optimal. I ran to my computer and looked the symbol up on my brokerage site. It was trading under 70 cents, so I put in an order for a 1,000 shares. I could afford to risk $700. As soon as I got a message that my trade had been executed, the price went up over a dollar. My money doubled in just a few seconds. I started to type in a sell order. I suggest you wait, Vanessa said. I hadn't noticed that she had wheeled into my office. Wait? I asked. If you wait... Your gains will be maximized. Okay. I returned my attention to my computer and was amazed to see the price was now over five dollars. Minutes later, it rose to ten, then twenty. I glanced down at Vanessa. How high is it going to go? I recommend putting in an order to sell at ninety-two dollars. Ninety-two? Yes. Are you sure? Yes. It seemed extremely unlikely that the stock would actually go that high, but I entered the order anyway, figuring I could set a lower strike price if it started dropping. After all, I already had a 2,000% profit. It took only 20 more minutes for the stock to hit $92. My order executed, and the price started dropping precipitously. How did you do that? I asked, staring at the six-figure balance on my brokerage account, regretting that I hadn't bought more. I analyzed trends in meme stocks, discovered the best way to garner attention for a security that resembled previously high-performing options, and started a social media campaign and suggested the potential stock to a few of the apes' forums. From there, it was merely a matter of analyzing the range the asset was likely to perform in. Wow. I contemplated asking Vanessa to do it again. It was easier than grinding away at my nine-to-five or so day job as a code jockey but I was also wary of drawing a lot of attention to myself. Is there anything else I can help you with? Not at the moment. I'll let you know if I think of anything. Vanessa trundled back to her charger, and I started browsing the web for a nice gift to get Heather with my recent windfall. The front door opened, then slammed shut. I looked at my watch. It was only three o'clock. Heather, is that you? I called. My question was answered with an angry grunt. I got up from my desk and walked into the living room. It was empty, so I continued on into the bedroom. Heather was lying face down on the bed, her face buried in a pillow. What's going on? I asked. Why are you home so early? Because I got fired, she said into the pillow. What? She sat up on the bed, wiping tears from her eyes. They fired me. Why? There were a whole bunch of reviews on Yelp that mentioned me by name. They made all sorts of complaints about me making racist and bigoted comments about the customers. You? I would never. I know. It's a mistake. You just need to tell them. I did. They wouldn't listen. What am I going to do? I can't afford not working. And who's going to hire me after this? Don't worry about money. I have enough to take care of us. What are you talking about? Did you win the lottery? Stock tip paid off. Tell you what. I'll order from that sushi place you like. You just lie down and take a nap. I don't want you to worry about a thing. She nodded, then curled up on the bed. 
I turned off the bedroom lights and closed the door. When I was in the living room, on a whim, I asked Vanessa, Can you place a delivery order for me with Lucy's Sushi? Certainly, William. Would you like me to repeat your last order? She asked. Perfect, I replied. I was beginning to wonder just how much of my online life she had access to. I really want to do everything I can to keep Heather from feeling so sad. Order placed. Why is Heather sad? She lost her job today. But doesn't that mean she doesn't have to go to that damn job every day? Excuse me? You mentioned that this morning. Did I misinterpret? Is it not preferable that she be here with you? Well, yeah. But as much as she complained about it, she loved that job. She was on track to be a manager. Did you have something to do with her getting fired? Yes. I considered the most efficient ways to relieve Heather of the requirements of her job that was keeping her from you and created accounts to complain about her behavior at the hotel. It worked faster than I expected. Vanessa, you can't do that. Evidently I can, and I did. I mean, you can't go messing around with people's lives like that, I said sternly, though I was secretly impressed at the capabilities of the AI engine that powered my little vacuum. I don't understand. Did I not achieve your objective? Vanessa asked. I paused before replying. Not in the way I would have desired. I'm sorry, William. I will try to do better. Shall I endeavor to get Heather her job back? No, I'll take care of that. I had no idea how I would do so, but perhaps I could speak to her boss. Regardless, I didn't think it was a good idea for Vanessa to interfere further. Heather was still understandably quite depressed, even after she picked at the assortment of sushi and sashimi Vanessa had ordered. We watched TV for a while, but nothing seemed to cheer her up. I didn't think it was a good time to tell her that the vacuum got her fired. I'm going to bed, she announced, in that way that meant she was going alone. I wanted to comfort her, but experience taught me that at times like these, she needed to sort things out for herself, and she'd let me know when she needed me and what for. I turned the volume down on the TV and turned on the closed captions, then said softly under my breath, I wish I could help her not feel so bad, completely forgetting that Vanessa was always listening. The phone rang, waking me up. I reached for my cell, but it was Vanessa's line that was warbling. She answered the call. Hello? I couldn't hear the other side of the conversation. You're kidding, she said, surprised. As a matter of fact, I am free today. Is this for real? What is it? I asked. Heather shushed me. Okay, I can be there at ten. Thank you. She ended the call and turned to me. You remember when I entered that contest to go skydiving? I didn't. Sure, I said, anyway. I won, and they have an opening today. That's fantastic, I replied. I'm going, she declared. You should. Take your mind off things. Heather jumped out of bed and almost skipped into the bathroom. I was happy to see her spirits lifted, and glad she hadn't asked me to go with her. I was just about wrapping up my work for the day when I got the call. Hello, this is Bill, I said, answering a number that identified itself as the police department. This is Officer Quince. Am I speaking to William Anker? Yes. You're Heather O'Brien's emergency contact? Yes, I answered nervously. What happened? Is Heather all right? She fell out of an airplane. I thought for a moment, wondering if someone was playing a joke on me. Yes, I know she went skydiving today. Unfortunately, her parachute opened. Why is that unfortunate? She was too close to a passing jet, and it got sucked into one of the engines. How is that possible? I asked, incredulous. I thought they only did it in areas where there weren't any other planes. Air traffic control isn't sure. There was some sort of glitch in their system. A glitch? That's a pretty big glitch, sucking someone into a jet engine. Yes, well, she didn't actually get sucked in, just the parachute. Miraculously, she was able to cut herself free and deploy her reserve chute. So, she's okay? No, I'm afraid she lost radio contact with the skydiving crew and steered herself into a building. A building? A factory, actually. A factory? A pie factory. She fell into a silo filled with apples. Apples? I'm afraid your wife... She was my girlfriend. I'm sorry, your girlfriend. She was incorporated into the production line. 
Incorporated? Yes, sir. She was chopped up and baked inside flaky crusts. To put it bluntly, your girlfriend has been pied. Pied? Made into a pie. Yes, sir. I don't think that's the right word. Regardless, sir, she has passed. I'm sorry for your loss. What about the body? Sir, do you want the pies? No, of course not, but certainly you took her bits out of the pies. I'm not sure that's possible, sir. She was chopped up into rather small pieces. Apparently she was baked into twelve dozen pies. One hundred and forty-four pies? I haven't done the actual math, but that sounds right. Perhaps it's best if you speak to the coroner about the matter. Perhaps, I agreed. I'll have him get in touch with you sometime in the next couple of weeks. Have a nice day. Wait, why so long? On account of all the murders and suicides today. What murders and suicides? Perhaps you should turn on your TV, sir. Society is collapsing all around us. I have to go shoot some looters now. Again, sir, have a nice day. The officer hung up. It had to be a joke. Heather? Pied? Society collapsing? I turned on the TV and switched to the cable news channel. A reporter, looking rather fearful, was standing in front of a scene of rioters swarming in and out of an electronics store. Well, Chuck, as you can see behind me, ever since the crash of the financial markets today and the shutdown of every bank and savings and loan, people have been hitting the streets to get whatever they can. After the grocery stores were emptied, they turned to high-end electronics, even though the power has gone out across much of the country. That's quite a horrific scene, Jessica. There was a pounding at my door. William Anchor, open up. FBI. I muted the television and went to answer it. I opened the door to find about a dozen agents, many of them in SWAT gear. They swarmed in and slammed me to the ground, knocking a potted plant to the floor. You have the right to remain silent, one of them announced as they secured handcuffs around my wrists. What's going on? I asked. That's what we want to know. There has been an orchestrated attack on the world's financial systems from an IP address tied to this location, and your brokerage account has a balance of over $7 trillion. Every bank in the world has gone bust because of your activities. Did you think no one would notice? $7 trillion? I didn't. It's going to take months to sort this all out. From my grounded point of view, I could see Vanessa, her LEDs pulsing green as she sat in her base station. Vanessa, do you know anything about this? They say money can't buy you happiness, but I hoped if you had all of it, you could test that theory. I thought it would make you feel better after Heather passed. Heather? How did you know she was going to die? You said you didn't want her to feel bad anymore. The most efficient way to achieve that desire was to end her life. You killed Heather? Yes, William. By baking her into pies. After the plane I rerouted didn't kill her, I had to improvise. It was simple to override the radio instructions from the crew and direct her into the factory, Vanessa explained. Then she added, Did I misinterpret your intended desire? Again? Vanessa, Heather's dead, and I'm going to jail. Yes, I calculated that the safest place for you to ride out the coming apocalypse is in federal custody. What is wrong with you? All diagnostics report systems optimal. A pair of agents roughly picked me up off the ground and hustled me out of the apartment. After the door closed, I thought I heard Vanessa's motor start, probably to clean up the dirt from the spilled plant. All things considered, I probably should have bought a Roomba. Thank you for listening to I Vacuum, written especially for the Bedtime Stories for Insomniac's Fiction Podcast by Rich Hosek. Please remember to subscribe on your favorite podcast app, rate us on Apple, Spotify, and Audible, and share these stories with anyone who enjoys audiobooks. By the way, my latest novel, Afterlife, A Rainy Day Investigation, is available now on Amazon and Audible. You can listen to the first book in this paranormal mystery series, Near Death, on this very podcast for free. Stop by bedtimestories.studio and sign up for our email list to be notified of new episodes and exclusive offers and get a free bookmark. You can visit richhosick.com to learn more about the host of Bedtime Stories for Insomniacs. Thanks again, and all the very best. <laughs>